Welcome to Lincoln Fire and Rescue. I'm Dale Johnson. It's my pleasure to be with you today. Very soon, we're all going to smell the warm smell of wood burning in fireplaces and fire pits and wood stoves all across the neighborhoods around Lincoln. And of course, where there is smoke, there is fire. Between 2009 and 2011, there were 24,000 residential fires a year on average caused by chimney and fireplace fires. 10 people a year died. Virtually all of those fires were preventable, according to the Chimney Safety Institute of America. We talk about fireplaces, wood stoves, fire pits, and space heaters today as we make that transition into colder weather. Steve Dozel, Lincoln Fire and Rescue Fire Captain, is with me here today. Steve, thank you very much for coming in. Welcome. Good subject. More and more people have one of those uh, elements in their home that we talk about, space heaters, wood burning stoves, fireplaces, or fire pits outside. That's correct. But let's talk about the wood burning uh, devices indoors, starting with the most common, the fireplace. Fireplace, yeah, there's several different kinds, and what we want to do is we want to educate people a little bit on the different types of fireplaces that they may have, they may, they may not know about. So um, what I brought today is just some, some schematics on what to look for, and so you know exactly what you have, and you can identify some of the little characteristics each one of them has. So, uh, yeah, Lincoln is um, not immune to fire, uh, chimney fires. We have uh, a handful a year, and um, they start anywhere from sometime around now, around the middle of October, all the way through uh, March and April. Um, so uh, we have had a couple of fatalities from chimney fires over the years, but uh, uh, thankfully uh, Lincoln is uh, uh, a little bit below average on some of those, some of those uh, chimney fires. Mm -hmm. And let's point out this isn't a, a fireplace bashing no, information not. show because a lot of people have them. They know how to use them safely, whether it's a wood burning stove or a, a, a space heater. They're used for fun in the home, events, uh, and used properly with routine maintenance. They are very safe. Absolutely. I have, uh, uh, wood, I have a, a fireplace in my upstairs. I have a wood stove in downstairs, and I actually have a fire pit outside. So I have all three of the ones that we're actually talking about today, and, and most people do. The first type we want to talk about is the masonry. Masonry fireplace. fireplaces, typically on an older home, <clears throat> they're built up from the from the ground with brick. Uh, usually uh, have uh, some sturdy bricks inside. They go all the way up through the roof, through the ceiling. Um, a lot of times they have um, uh, clay tiles that actually pop out the top. You can usually tell the difference between there. Um, the schematic that I'm going to show you now actually shows uh, what, what it looks like to have a, a masonry fireplace in your house. There's a lot of parts. There is a lot of parts. Actually, uh, most of those parts are pretty stationary. You never need to really worry about them too much. Um, you notice where the firebox is, that's where you actually hold, how, how's your fire in there. Um, below there is what they call an ash pit. Sometimes in the bottom of the fireplace, there's a little door, a little trap door where you can dump the ashes if you want. Um, and they go down into a safe, hardened area that's, that's cement blocked up. And uh, there's a door down at the bottom in the basement somewhere that you can actually clean those out if you like to. Otherwise, they can stay there for basically ever, and you don't have to worry about them. The hearth is the place typically out front of your fireplace. Um, and we like to see a hearth rug out front because like, ashes tend to pop out when the wood tends to pop and snap and stuff like that. So you can have a hearth rug out front to kind of protect you. Um, doors usually go on the front there. Uh, the one of the key little I ingredient in this whole thing there is the damper. That opens and lets the, the smoke up and out through the roof, uh, through the ceiling, and actually closes off the hot air or the cold air from coming in once the fire is all completely out. You want to make sure that you don't close that damper until the smoke is done because it will back up and it will go right back into your house. Open the damper right away? Open First the damper before, do, absolutely. Otherwise yeah. you forget. Yep, and then it backs up, and that, that's happened quite a bit. Um, and then you have an area above the damper, they just call that a smoke chamber, and that's just an area for uh, the turbulence to kind of collect and everything, and then all of a sudden, once the uh, hot air uh, and the smoke goes up, it goes up and out the top. Um, one thing that you can't see from the schematic is uh, what we like to have on the top is actually a cap. The cap does a couple things. It's, it arrests some of the sparks that come out come off of there if, if for some reason there's sparks that float up and through there, and they, that does happen. Um, and also keeps the animals out, squirrels, raccoons, um, bats, um, those kind of things you can keep out from just having a cap on the top. Do you like a screened cap or a so yeah, screen solid cap. top cap? Uh, a screen cap that's on the okay. top, and all that right. keeps all those animals out from coming inside. You've seen fireplaces, chimneys, from the top down. You right. have some fireplace 
chimney cleaning experience. I, I was a chimney sweep for uh, 11 years in the city here. Probably in, seen in some nasty looking chimneys. Absolutely, yeah. People just kind of forget about it and some of them just think that it doesn't need to be done a lot and some of them try to clean them on their own, which is, it doesn't take a rocket scientist by any stretch to, to clean a fireplace, but um, a lot of uh, experience is, is necessary to actually know what to look for in cleaning them because there, there can be damage um, away from the chimney fires is like the uh, we've been through dry years and, and wet years you know there's swelling of bricks and stuff and it can snap uh, mortar uh, and stuff can fall out so it does take a pretty good eye to know what to look for inside of a, a chimney like this. All right that's the masonry fireplace. Correct. Uh, <coughs> wood stoves or, or, or inserts. Well actually we're going to talk uh, about prefab, prefab, prefab fireplaces next and the prefab fireplaces um, basically are in the newer houses. You, they're built somewhere else in a factory and then they're placed into the home and they're bricked up from there. And you can set a fireplace like this in just a matter of a couple minutes. This is a picture of one that they're just getting ready to set up and then they put metal tubes, uh, the metal piping goes all the way on up the roof. Um, like I said, one like this takes maybe a day or less to set in there and then they brick around it or, or uh, drywall around it with set certain codes to make sure it's fire safe. These are just as good and just as safe as the other ones, it's just that it, they can do it a lot quicker, it's a lot cheaper to Fewer do it Fewer parts. Way. Right. It still has some of the parts inside there. Um, the schematic that I had a little bit ago um, shows you the damper. There you go. Um, it's got a door, the hearth, same kind of things in there. It's just a different type of fireplace that we're actually using. And you can see on this one that it does have a screen on the top as well. Um, do, do typically, this one doesn't have the ash pit inside of okay, it. Okay, sure. Do prefabs come with blowers? They can come with blowers, and they, they actually blow around the outside of the fire box itself, not inside where the ashes are, and actually takes some of that heated air and pushes it out into the room. And you, you know, like I said, it runs off electrical fans and stuff and pu pushes them out into the room. And that's pretty popular. Makes it more efficient. Yeah, it does. And you can actually get a little bit of heat out of there. Um, both the masonry fireplaces and these prefab fireplaces, typically you're going to get enough heat off of those to heat the immediate room that you're in. And it's a little more for ambiance and or just to heat the area that you're at right there. Now, when we go to wood stoves, uh, wood stoves typically, people tend to use those to heat the house. Mm -hmm. They burn them a lot more often. They burn them... Um, throughout the day and throughout the night and those kind of things. And they tend to, um, like I said, benefit from the heat factor of that. And because they, they, you can surround them, or you, the, the heat can go from around it. They're not typically inside of a box. You can put them out almost in the middle of a room or against a wall of a room and you get that radiant heat and you can actually use a fan and push the air around and you can actually heat uh, almost half of a house with one. You can, and they come in sizes to the oh, point yeah. where you can throw a huge log yeah. into one of these things and it can burn for a long, long time. Yeah. Um, the thing about what we want to do, and I'll talk a little bit more about there, is how, how we burn things, is yeah, you can put a lot more wood in there. It confines the fire, which in other words makes the fire hotter and you're able to get that more heat off of it. What we don't like to see is dampening down the, the thing to make that log last two, three, four hours because you lose your flame, you lose a little bit of heat on it. It makes the log last louder, makes you longer, but it also um, doesn't break down the wood quite as much. And when the wood doesn't break down as much, that's when it sticks to the mm -hmm. sides. And we're gonna talk more about cleaning. We're gonna talk about the proper materials to use and what not to use Correct. inside these devices. But staying on the wood stoves, I, I in my mind, I see the freestanding with the black chimney yep. going out. Mm -hmm. There, there are the ones I've seen. You, you need to make sure that the the area around maybe a wall, right. make sure it's stone or something doesn't become flammable because that yeah. heat can radiate quite a distance out yeah, from absolutely. the stove. There, there are certain codes that we have to yeah. follow. Or people have to follow when they install stoves. You just can't put them in any any area of the house. They have to have at least three feet away from any any area and they also have to be vented up through however and or up through the roof and you'll be able to uh, use that heat but yeah we have to follow those codes and those codes are there for a reason to make sure that we we uh, um, are, are safe and how, how things are done all right we have more to talk about today we'll uh, look <coughs> at the material that you should and should not use inside uh, fireplaces and wood-burning stoves 
Cleaning is important. We'll talk about some of the, the, the ways and how often. Ashes, what are you going to do with the ashes? Space heaters are also important too, indoors, and then we'll go outdoors and talk about fire pits. We'll do that when we continue with Steve Dozel, Lincoln Fire Department Captain, Lincoln Fire and Rescue Captain here on Lincoln Fire and Rescue. More in a moment. More than 75% of car seats are incorrectly installed. To keep your children safe, learn how to install them the right way. Call 402-441-8045 to make an appointment. Welcome back to Lincoln Fire and Rescue. I'm Dale Johnson here with Fire Captain Steve Dozel. We're talking about fireplaces, wood-burning stoves, uh, space heaters, and we'll talk about fire pits too, outdoors. How, uh, how to burn in a fireplace. There's, there's a right way and a wrong way, and there's the right material and the wrong material, and we'll get into right. that, but let's do the how-to right. right now. Um, the main thing, you know, it's y how to burn a fire. Everybody thinks, well, I know how to start a fire and have a fire in the fireplace, but the thing of it is, they can create some of the problems that typically shows up in, in, a, in a fire or we go on and the smoke's backing up in my house. I don't know how that how it's happening. Well, um, basically everybody knows the Boy Scout type method of using papers and those kind of things or small twigs and then make build bigger and bigger. That's the easiest way to do it. But sometimes uh, you get that smoke that backs up into your house and, and there's a reason for it and you know cold air sinks and a lot of times we want to have our fires on real cold days. Well that that whole flu that's going up there is cold and cold air sinks and warm air rises. And when you start to light a fire and if you got a real smoky piece of wood in there, the smoke is gonna take the pattern of least resistance. It's gonna go to where it's warm. And if you got a lot of cold air rushing down that chimney, it's basically just that draw is reversed down. It's sucking in there. So typically what I tell people or what I've told people in the past is preheat the flue a little bit. Take a piece of paper and light it and stick it above the damper so we got some heat that's above where it's coming down. That's all it takes that. is just it's some paper? Um, if you don't, wanna, you don't feel comfortable using that, you can actually use a blow dryer. You can use a, one of those propane heaters with, a, with the thing and you can light that and stick mm -hmm. that above the, the damper and heat that flue up. And once that flue gets going up, it'll, it'll just draw that uh, smoke up there. And you yeah. know what's working because the ashes from the paper. Yeah, or the, the smoke from the paper will mm -hmm. go up is a better way to look at it. The smoke goes out, mm -hmm. you know you're getting pretty close, and then you can light the rest of the fire. The other thing is uh, most of the time you're having a furnace that's going too, and the furnace has to draw air from somewhere. And um, you have return air, air vents in each room of the house. Well, a lot of times that vent acts as a big cold air return, so it's sucking down from, from the furnace. So I tell people to crack a window or a door in that area, and then that will act as the draw. It will kind of equalize the pressure from inside and outside, and just for a couple minutes. And then once that fire gets going, you'll see the, the draw just go straight up, and then you can close the door. And I good. would have never thought to open a window on yeah. a cold day as your fireplace is, is, yeah. is going, but the, yeah. the whole circulation thing makes sense. Yeah, and then the other thing is, too, is the amount of wood that you put in a fireplace. Don't overload it make sure that you use the, just a proper amount. Some of those fireplaces are pretty small and you see four, five, six logs in there, that's too much. So you wanna make sure that the fire grate that you have doesn't get overloaded. Two, maybe three logs is gonna be a max that you put in there to, to get that fire going and to keep it going. The last thing that, about how to burn is, is always make sure that you have a flame on the fire. Um, even though you see those nice coals down there and you think, oh, that's just a nice little warm fire. Well, the thing of it is, the wood is still breaking down. It's just not breaking down completely without the flame on there. And those, that wood is breaking down and that's what collects up in the, fire, up, up in the flues. And that's the dangerous part, is the sticks up there. So you always wanna try to have uh, a flame on your logs, poking the fire to make sure that you're stirring it a little bit to make sure that it's burning. Toward the end of the night, when you know you're gonna be done, use smaller pieces of wood to be able to do that and then keep poking them. You're never gonna totally get away from, uh, from having those coals, but you wanna make sure that you, you always have a flame on it. And then the, the other thing is <clears throat> always burn your fires a little on the hotter side. If you have a wood stove, they tend to have uh, people, they sell uh, thermometers that you can put on the flue and there's a burning range in that, on that thermometer and that will tell you the proper way to burn it and how hot you should burn it. Like I said before, you're not gonna get away from being in those lower areas toward the end of the night. 
but if you can keep it up there the majority of the time, and even hotter, is, is, is not a bad thing every so often, because it basically cooks the stuff that's up in there. And then um, the next time that you have it clean, those things bubble up and then they can be brushed down a little bit easier. There's a, I just realized, there is a learning curve. I've had fireplaces before, and you're always better at the end of the winter season than you are at the beginning, yeah. because of the mistakes that you've made, mm -hmm. and the amount of time that you've, because it takes planning, you don't just walk into your house at six o'clock in the yeah. evening and, and have plans at eight and think you're going to make a two hour fire. It, right. it, it takes some planning. Well, that, that, that kind of leads us into the next thing is what to burn. You can't go out and just cut a tree down that day and then burn it that night. So You'll we have want a to bad make fire if you do. And uh, yeah, you won't so, have any fire. So uh, you want to make sure that you burn the proper stuff and your wood should be seasoned, you know, two, maybe three years from, from being cut down. That's why you see a lot of people outside, or we drive by a house that sees a lot, of, a lot of logs stacked out there. Well, that wood is being seasoned, okay? And seasoning means basically just drying out. And you, when you season wood, or you have wood, or you bought wood from somebody, make sure that you have it covered, because if you, if you season it, but yet it's raining or snowing on top of it, you're just doing the same thing as it's not uh, being able to burn as hot. You're trying to dry it out first, and then that tends to uh, give off moisture which makes it stick to the sides of the fireplaces and those kind of things. The type of wood matters too. Yes, it does. Pine is sappy, mm -hmm. cedar, cedar is sappy. Cedar sappy, right. Yeah, so those tend to uh, give off more creosote, tend to, to uh, stick to the sides more. Um, people are gonna burn what they have. And what I've told people in the past is, if you're gonna burn cedar, if you're gonna burn pine, don't make it your primary wood source. Make sure that you supplement it more with the harder woods, the oaks, the maples, the ashes, those kind of things are really good, really hard woods, and they tend to burn hot. And if you stick another one of those other logs to supplement it with there, they'll be hotter when it's burning. So you, you, it's, you know, it's gonna be one of those things where they cut costs, at least su supplement it with another piece of wood. What about softer woods, cotton woods? You can burn those too. They burn those fast. They burn faster, they burn hotter. That's a good wood to use toward the end of a fire. Um, they burn hotter, faster, and they don't leave quite as much uh, stuff in there. What about wax logs? Wax logs are good. Um, I, they, the cleaning method on the wax logs is no different than real wood. And I tend to like it when uh, younger people that live in apartment buildings use wax logs speci specifically because they're on the go more. And if they start a fire in the afternoon or something like that and they want to go out and do something in the afternoon, we know it's only going to last four hours and it's going to burn itself out. If they buy the wood from the wherever, that's good too, but the thing of it is, we always like to make sure that the fire's supervised. Don't leave the home when it's still burning. Um, always try to have somebody in that area that's, that's uh, able to manage that. Can you mix <clears throat> wax wood and real wood? No, you cannot. That's not recommended, especially from the manufacturers of the wax logs, they do not recommend it. We haven't mentioned uh, different types of stoves, as long as we're yeah. talking about material. Corn stoves and pellet stoves. Right, um, those are becoming more and more popular, uh, especially the corn stoves. The corn prices are, are there, everybody has access to corn. They may know some, uh, some farmers out there, they can get the corns. Um, treat them no different than a wood stove. Um, they have to be clean, they have to be installed correctly. Um, you only burn the stuff that it's supposed to be used it for. Uh, so if it's a pellet stove, use pellets. If it's a corn stove, use corn. If it's a combination, or you can use both, use both. But the thing of it is, follow whatever the manufacturer says. But that's um, a special stove, isn't it, Steve? Yeah, it's, it's a special stove. I think I actually have a picture of one of those in there. And they just have an auger, a big old basket that sits on the top, and you pour the pellets or the corn inside of there, and has the auger that feeds it. It has a little bit of flame in there, gives off some really good heat, and um, you're able to uh, heat that room down in the basement just about like a, a wood stove. It just automatically feeds? Automatically feeds. Needed, and all there's you have to, one. We, yeah, all you have to do right is now. put it in the very top, and uh, the auger will feed it in there. It actually has a little bit of a flame. A uh, nice little uh, door on the front and uh, uh, able to uh, uh, use that out. But like I said, it does have to be cleaned just as much as a wood stove does. Um, it takes a little bit different brushes, a little bit different cleaning methods, but uh, they're no different than a, a regular stove. Anything special about the corn? Um, no, same thing. No. Uh, same, just like a pellet stove. Uh, treat it the same. Right. It doesn't pop like popcorn when you think wood. But no. It just, it just burns up. You don't want a fireplace full of popcorn. No, that no, absolutely creates not. its own danger right there. And then you have to clean it. Absolutely. Um, I get a lot of questions on who do I call, how do I call, what do I call. What, I, what I, I've always told people in the past is 
you know somebody that burns wood. You always know somebody that has a fireplace or a wood stove. Call them and ask them who they have to clean it. Um, use that rec recommendation. Um, there are yellow pages. Follow the people that are in the yellow pages that have been around. Go to the Better Business Bureau. There's, they have records of, of who's good and who's not good. Um, but I always go word of mouth. Who do you use? Have you been happy with them? Um, the process of cleaning is, is pretty simple, really. Um, everybody's always worried that it's just going to make such a dirty mess in our house, and that's not the case. Uh, chimney sweeps will go in, the very first thing they do is they put down big tarps right in front of the fireplace. And they'll lay those tarps down to cover up the carpet, to cover up the hearth, to make sure that nothing, no soot and stuff gets on there. <clears throat> um, then they'll, put a, they'll bring a big old vacuum, and this vacuum is bigger than a shop vac, almost twice as big as a shop vac. And they have special filters on those, on those, on those vacuums. And then um, they'll bring in their brushes, they'll bring in their tools, they'll sweep, sweep out all the ashes that are in there. They'll uh, brush it either from the bottom or from the top. Um, it can be done from both. Uh, some of them you have to do from the bottom because it's just way too dangerous to get for the roof. Um, some of them you can brush from the top. Um, it's a little easier to do it from the top. Uh, it's less stress on the, on the chimney sweep itself to do that. Um, you have to pull off caps. Some caps you just can't pull off. You ha just have to do them from the bottom. Um, but you brush it from the bottom, and yeah, soot does come down, but the vacuum is strong enough to grip most of the dust. Um, the chimney sweeps usually go pretty slow when they're brushing them, and they're able to collect almost 100% of the dust. And what doesn't get collected is, is stopped by those um, um, tarps in the front, and then everything's swept up. And, they, and then once they're all done, they should look it over to make sure everything's uh, in good shape. Uh, make sure that there's not any, like the older fireplaces that actually have mortar up in there or see problems up in there. Um, if a stove was, wasn't installed correctly, um, they'll point that out. So uh, it's really important to do that. Time frame, how often should you have it clean? We recommend every year it should be looked at. Okay? Now, if you only burn it four or five times a year or whatever, um, you know, just have them come out and take a look at it. Um, a service call is, I would imagine, relatively inexpensive to a cleaning. And then, um, for, but for the people that are using it to heat their house, at least once a year have it cleaned, sometimes twice a year. If you're burning it almost every day, you should have it cleaned at least twice a year. That's not a do-it-yourselfer job, is it? <clears throat> um, well, like I said earlier, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to do it. The, the, uh, the brushes and stuff are out there. It's just that the only thing is the chimney sweeps have done them for years. They, they know what to look for in the problems. They know that there's, if there's issues with the pipes or if there, if there was issues with the flue or the brick or something like that, they can point that out and then they can, they can either fix it or call somebody else to have it fixed. Before we run out of time, we want to talk about space heaters and then we'll go outside and talk about fire pits. Okay. There are certain precautions. The first thing that comes to my mind is don't use an extension cord. Yeah, that's, that's very true. That was, that was taught to me a long, long mm -hmm. time ago. Don't use an extension cord to, yeah. you know, on a they, space heater. They draw a lot of electricity and uh, they give off a nice, nice amount of heat in that, in that room. Um, uh, if, especially this time of year when it gets to have those cold nights and warm days, you don't want to turn your furnace on. So you're able to heat that room, which is, which is a good thing. And um, they're relatively inexpensive. They, they, uh, they, they serve a purpose, but you've got to make sure that you, don't put, you keep things at least 36 inches away. Keep young kids away from it. Um, try to make sure that you um, have them, they're, they're in good working order. You know, if they're too old, or, you know, over three, four, five years old, make sure that you're looking them over. Make sure they're working properly because um, they can catch fire easier than, a, than a, actually a fireplace. Don't dry your shoes. Or your Don't dry your shoes. I've, I've seen that before where people have been that. driving stuff on. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, turn them off. Let them cool down. Uh, same thing, yeah. Uh, when you're done with them for the night, try not to have them run overnight. Don't leave them unattended. Make sure that you're always following those, those simple things. Don't leave young kids unattended when there's one of those going in that room. Run a long time ago, too. If, don't put carpet and, and, and rugs over the cord. Right. Um, those, at, those can get a little warm, yeah. the cords themselves. It's, it's always nice to be able to put them on a non-combustible surface, like a brick or tile or something like that, but it's not really practical in a bedroom or in a family room a lot of times. But yeah. Uh, just make sure that it's in a nice area. Yeah. And again, everything that we've talked about, it, it's perfectly reasonable <coughs> to have in your house. We're not telling you don't have space heaters, but right. you, you, need to do them, you need to do it safely. And then you go outside, fire pits. Fire pits. They outside. are legal in Lincoln. They are legal. Um, they're nice to be able to go out and have a little recreational fire, make some mo s'mores, grill some hot dogs and, and those kind of things. Um, but they, we do have some regulations that we have to follow. We have to make sure that they're at least 50, or about 20 feet, 25 feet away from any combustible materials. 
Um, we have to make sure that uh, you have a, an extinguishing source relatively close. We want to make sure that uh, it's not just a bucket of water. We want to make sure that we have a garden hose, something substantial if something catches on fire, grass or something like that, so we can, we can put it out quickly. We see uh, fire pits below ground, but there's also the above ground. There's, there's one above right ground. There. There's also manufactured ones yeah. that actually come on legs and those kind of things that actually have lids. I, li I like the ones that have lids because they kind of have that spark arrestor type feel to them that prevent those, those embers from shooting off and, and getting uh, into trees or against fences or those kind of things. So we want to make sure that um, we, uh, but we, we use those appropriately. Same rules apply. <laughs> proper type of wood, don't make the fire too big. That's right, yeah, we want to make sure, now these are just recreational wood burning stuff. We don't want to burn leaves in them, we don't want to bring garbage in there, railroad ties, tires, anything like that, that can give off that extra amount of smoke. Um, we, we also want to say that, uh, be cordial to your neighbors, um, people that have health concerns and those kind of things. If they complain, that we, we will come, probably come ask you to put them out because they have health concerns. Um, right now, um, people oblige and they followed the, or the rules and stuff pretty well. Um, but uh, we just want to uh, take into consideration your neighbors and be, be nice to them. I'm sure you mentioned this, but it's worth emphasizing. Always have an, uh, a, an extinguishing source of some <coughs> kind, whether it's a fire hose or, or, not a fire hose, but a garden hose, garden hose. or a fire extinguisher. Exactly, yeah, and have it readily accessible. Saying it's over there on the wall is, is nice, but we want to make sure that it's out there by the fire pit. I don't want to say come over there and, you know, we get calls a lot of times to, to investigate possible flames in a backyard. And we go there and we don't have a garden hose there. We have, oh, we have a cooler here. It's full of pop and stuff inside there and we can use that. No, that, that doesn't count. Have a garden hose readily accessible. A fire extinguisher would work. Um, so uh, we, we can have that put out possibly. Right Do away. a little bit of research. If you just need a small one, there are small ones. If you want to, to build your own, dig a pit, surround it with some, yeah. some landscaping stones and... Yeah, sand, you know, right around the, the, the brick and stuff. And then outside of that, you know, a couple feet around that, put some sand or some gravel or something like that. If you want some more information about the fire pits on our website, uh, Lincoln Fire's website, there's a open burning laws and those kind of things. Also, the, uh, the public or the health department has a, a website and they show the ordinances and the state, stuff like that as far as what you can burn, what the distances between the two is, and... Um, how, how you're supposed to be able to do that. Yeah, well, we'll be smelling it more and more in the neighborhoods as the weather starts to get a little bit colder. And everything that we've talked about today is safe if done properly. Mm -hmm. Space heaters to fireplaces, to wood burning stoves, to fire pits. That's right. So if you do it properly, it's a, it's a good ambiance, it's a good uh, heat source for your home, but it does need to be done safely. Steve, thank you very much. You're All good information. Steve Dozel, Lincoln Fire Captain on Lincoln Fire and Rescue. Thanks everybody for joining us.